<clears throat> Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful spring day. It is April Fool's Day here in the middle of this joke on the planet. Here in the collapse of global industrial <coughs> civilization in the isolation chamber of Garfield, Texas. And I am Sam Mitchell and this is my little squirrely hunting co-pilot. Where's that squirrely? Where's the squirrely? Is that there or not? My little squirrel hunting co-pilot Sancho Panza finally here at uh, 5.30 in the afternoon bringing you today's Collapse Chronicle. Didn't think I was going to find one, but I want to thank Alert Tribe member, who was it, who actually found a non-coronavirus chronicle. I want to thank Juan Chat Thiranu has found another no C-word article for uh, Collapse Chronicles here on this gorgeous April 1st, 2020, coming from no less than NPR. NPR, I guess, is teaming up with PBS. What a combo. NPR meets PBS to get through a whole story and perhaps a, uh, a whole documentary without the C word. Instead, we have the P word. Instead of that, we're going from the C word to the P word. <clears throat> Plastic wars. Industry spent millions selling recycling to sell more plastic. <coughs> Do you think so? Uh, all right, take it away. For decades, Americans have been sorting their trash, believing that most of their plastic could be recycled. But the truth is, the vast majority of all plastic produced cannot be or will not be recycled. In 40 years, in 40 years, less than 10% of plastic has ever been recycled, which means uh, more than 90% of every single sliver of plastic ever produced on this planet uh, has not been recycled. This is a real news flash for doomers. In a joint investigation, a joint investigation, I don't know what that has to do with plastic, anyway, in a joint investigation, NPR and the PBS series Frontline found that oil and gas companies, who are the makers of plastic, have known that all along even as they spent millions of dollars telling the American public the opposite. Here are our takeaways from our investigation. Number one, the plastic industry had, quote, serious doubt recycling would ever be viable. Starting in the late 1980s, the plastics industry spent tens of millions of dollars promoting recycling through ads, recycling projects, and public relations, telling people plastics could be and should be recycled. But their own internal records dating back to the 1970s show that industry officials long knew that recycling plastic on a large scale was unlikely to ever be economically viable. A report sent to top industry executives back in April of 1973 called recycling, recycling plastic costly and difficult. It called sorting plastic infeasible, saying in 1973, quote, there is no recovery from obsolete products, close quote. Another document one year later was candid. There is, quote, serious doubt uh, that widespread plastic recycling, quote, can ever be made viable on an economic basis. 
yes, we have the planet eaters cranking up next door. Okay, takeaway number two. The plastic industry promoted, promoted recycling to keep plastic bans at bay. Yes. Despite this, three former top officials who have never spoken pub publicly before said the industry promoted recycling as a way to beat back a growing tide of antipathy towards plastic in the 1980s and 90s. The industry was facing initiatives to ban or curb the use of plastic, you know, mainly talking about uh, those single-use uh, grocery bags and water bottles and all of that. Uh, recycling, the former officials told NPR and Frontline, became a way to preempt the bans and therefore to sell more plastic. Uh, this is Lou Freeman, former vice president of government affairs for the industry's lobbying group, then called the Society of the Plastics Industry. Quote, there was never an enthusiastic belief that recycling was ultimately going to work in a significant way. Another top official, Larry Thomas, who led SBI for more than a decade until 2000, says the strategy to push recycling was simple. Quote, the feeling was that the plastics industry was under fire. We got to do what it takes to take the heat off because we want to continue to make plastic products. If the public thinks that recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. Yes, out of sight, out of mind, pat yourself on the back. Okay, the next takeaway. More recycling means fewer profits for oil and gas companies. Wow. In interviews, current plastics industry officials acknowledged that recycling the vast majority of plastic has not worked in the past. But they add the industry is funding new technology that they believe will get recycling plastic up to scale. Uh-huh. The goal, they say, is to recycle 100% of the plastic they make, which obviously means they're putting themselves out of business. Okay, this is Jim Becker, Chevron Phillips Chemical Company's Vice President of Sustainability. There you go, the Sustainability Department of Chevron Phillips Chemical Company. A anybody who does not have a sick, twisted sense of irony. Okay, so for 50 years, for 50 years, these planet eaters have been lying out of their teeth. So what does the sustainability VP of Chevron Chemical Company have to say about their commitment to recycling 100% of the plastic they depend on for their very profits. <clears throat> Quote, recycling has to get more efficient, more economic. We have got to do a better job collecting the waste and sorting it. Five or ten years ago, the industry response was a little more combative. Today, it truly is not just PR, said Chevron Chemical Company's PR flack. It's not just PR. We don't like to see waste in the environment either. We really don't. We want to solve this, said the PR flack for Chevron Chemical Company. Okay, 
but back to uh, after that knee slapper that was the comedy portion of the uh, documentary so now getting back to reality but the more that plastic is recycled the less money the industry hiring such people like that lying sack of you know you know what will make selling new plastic yes the more that they're successful in their recycling plan the less money the industry will make selling new plastic hmm and those profits have in fact become increasingly important companies have told their shareholders that profits from using oil and gas for transportation are expected to decline in coming years with better fuel efficiency and the increasing use of electric cars and you can take that one with a grain of salt the size of a uh, coronavirus ventilator uh, I, I had to say the C word one time do you, you like how I work the C word into this rant anyway <clears throat> therefore industry analysts expect oil and gas demands from the chemical industry can you say the plastics industry will surpass the demand from the transportation side in the coming decade plastic production overall is now expected to triple to triple by 2050 and once again the same industry is spending money on ads and public relations to promote plastic and recycling where have we been through this dog and pony uh, lying sack of shit show anyway plastic is now more prevalent than it has ever been you know as we gear up for tripling the amount of plastic plastic is now more prevalent than it has ever been and harder than ever to recycle gas prices remain at historic lows making brand new plastic products cheaper than recycled plastic uh, and the industry now produces many more different and more complex kinds of plastics that are even more costly to sort and in many cases cannot be recycled at all efforts to reduce plastic consumption are mounting nationwide but any plan to slow the growth of plastic will face an industry with billions of dollars of future profits at stake guys is there anybody left on this planet uh, not seeing the humor of the Chevron Phillips Chemical Company Department of Sustainability uh, it is uh, it is April Fool's Day 365 days a year uh, but it is a gorgeous April Fool's Day here in my here under the organic pomegranate tree uh, so uh, well, I have finished mowing I didn't realize I was bleeding uh, I've mowed my grass my neighbors on both sides are busy mowing their grass and I suggest you get out there and mow your grass while you still can so if you enjoyed what NPR and PBS had to share with you about the never-ending lies coming from uh, big oil and big plastic I think BP means big plastic uh, please spend a few seconds to uh, thumb up this video if you did not enjoy hearing about how completely futile your joke recycling is uh, then you can thumb it down but do 
spend a few seconds to uh, to subscribe while you're over here and uh, get back to your isolation chamber on April Fool's Day, continuing to be fooled by the uh, global police state here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And you need to get, where's that squirrely? Where's that squirrely? Did the squirrely go up the mulberry tree or what? My guys. Gotta love the sound of all those fossil fuel powered gizmos. I got tractors on one side, I've got weed eaters on the other. Of course, I just put up my own gas sucking lawnmower. It is fossil fuels pedal to the metal in Garfield, Texas. Bye guys.